In this video, we'll see how to graph the, uh, an equation, the solutions of an equation that looks like this one we have here. And um, let's approach it in the same way as we did before. So let's, let's suppose, uh, first off, let's let, uh, build a table of values for x and y. And let's start by letting y equal 0. So if y equals 0, what we'd get is the equation x squared over 25 equals 1 which we can see would be true if x was 5 or negative 5. So we have two points, 5 with 0 and negative 5 with 0. Now, let's suppose we try to let x be 0. If x was 0, then what we'd end up with is negative y squared over 9 equals 1. And we can see that no matter what we put in for y, this part here uh, y squared over 9 is always going to be positive, so negative y squared over 9 is always less than or equal to 0, so it can't ever be equal to 1. Okay, So if x is 0, then it's not possible to get a value of y. So at this point, we really only have two pairs of numbers, uh, the negative 5 with 0 and 5 with 0. And those are our only pairs we have so far. So let's take a look uh, at uh, the equation itself and see if we can figure out a little bit more about what's going on here. So what we're going to do is um, let's take that equation and I'm going to solve it for y squared over 9. So I can do that a couple of ways. I could move the y squared over 9 to the right side, move to the 1 to the left, and then flip everything. Uh, the result in the end is going to be y squared over 9 uh, equals x squared over 25 minus 1. Okay, so you should make sure you could do the algebra to get to that point. Now, we know already that y squared over 9 is greater than or equal to 0. And so this side over here must be greater than or equal to 0 also. Um, but it's only greater than or equal to 0 when x squared over 25 is greater than or equal to 1. Okay. And we can see that that's certainly true if x is greater than or equal to 5. Then when we take x squared, we'll have something greater than or equal to 25, and our fraction will be greater than 0. But it's also true when x is less than or equal to negative 5. Okay, so the equation we have only makes sense for values of x greater than 5 or less than or equal to negative 5. So the two points we have so far are 5, 0 and negative 5, 0, which is these two. And what this calculation we just did tells us is that our graph has to lie out here to the right of 5 and to the left of negative 5, and it can't be in between. So this x just means that space in between negative 5 and 5, uh, our graph won't be in there. So what I want to do next is let's, let's take the equation that I'm boxing here in red right now, and let's solve that equation for y. So let's see. Let me get it back to where we can see it again. Uh, the first thing I would do with that is multiply both sides by 9. And that gives us y squared equals 9x squared over 25 minus 9. And then we can uh, take the square root of both sides. And remember when we do, we need to put a plus or minus with it. So we have plus or minus square root of 9x squared over 25 minus 9. Now that looks fairly complicated, <coughs> but the point I want to make is uh, right now is let's look at this part right here underneath the square root. And uh, what we want to make note of here is that if as x gets big, the term 9x squared over 25 will be much, much larger than the negative 9. So for instance, if x was 100, then that would be 90,000 over 25, which is still going to be a fairly large number. And when we subtract the 9 off of it, we barely notice. So the point is that this expression is approximately equal to the square root 
of 9x squared over 25. And this approximately equal to is when x is large, when x goes to infinity. And it turns out the same thing happens when x goes to negative infinity. And you should be able to see that because we square the value anyway. And so this part here, the square root of 9x squared over 25, and, and by the way, I should add a plus or minus with this, turns out to be plus or minus uh, 3 fifths times x. Okay, so what we have is y is equal to, or approximately equal to, plus or minus 3 fifths x when x is large, when it goes to infinity or negative infinity, large in absolute value. So let's, let's start a fresh page and write down what we have so far uh, concerning this situation. So again, our equation was x squared over 25 minus y squared over 9 equals 1. And what we know is that the graph contains the points 5, 0 and negative 5, 0. We also know that when we look at those two points, 5, negative 5, we know that our graph lies entirely out here and out here. And then we also know that y um, e is approximately equal to uh, plus or minus 3 fifths x uh, when x is large, negative, or positive. So when x goes to infinity or x goes to negative infinity. Okay, so let's kind of take that information and see what we can do with it. So if I draw a grid here, let's put a scale on it. Okay, so let's see. We know we have the points uh, 5 and negative 5. Actually, I should have made that scale a little smaller, but we have this point here and this point here. Okay, and then um, let's look at the graph of y equals 3 fifths x. So what that is is that's a line through the origin with slopes 3 fifths. So we go up 3, 1, 2, 3 up to here, over 5, out to here. And so that line goes through this point. So it looks something like that. And if we were to graph y equals negative 3 fifths x, uh, we go down 3 and over 5 and get a point there. So that looks something like this. Okay, so what we know is that our graph goes through this point at 5. If I look over here on the right-hand side, I know the entire graph lies off to the right of 5. And I know that as x gets bigger and bigger, the y gets to be approximately 3 fifths x. So in other words, uh, our graph has to get close to this line as we go out like that. Same on the bottom. So the graph turns out to have a shape like this over here. And on the other side, it does the same thing, but opening to the left. So um, let's take a look at, at, at a simpler way to obtain the same result. Okay, so we're going to still use the same equation. We have x squared over 25 minus y squared over 9 equals 1. We can rewrite that in the form x squared over 5 squared minus y squared over 3 squared equals 1. And so we can see that uh, 5 is a critical value on our x-axis. So let's go out to 5 and to negative 5, 5 and negative 5 both, because of this 5 right here. And on the y-axis, the critical values are 3. So we go to positive 3 and negative 3. And what we do here is we just create a rectangle where before we would have created an ellipse if we have a plus sign in our equation. We create a, a rectangle right there. 
And if we draw in the diagonals of the rectangle and extend them, those form the asymptotes for our graph. So we get something like this. Then all we have to do is find a couple points on the graph, and you'll see how those tell us how this finishes out. So we can see here that if y equals 0, if y equals 0, then that leads to uh, x equals plus or minus 5. So we get the point 5, 0 and negative 5, 0 on the left and right. So that tells us we have a hyperbola that opens left and right like this. Okay, so let's take a look at another example. Let's suppose we have the equation um, y squared over 9 minus x squared over 3 equals 1. We rewrite this in order to make the denominator of each a square. So this is y squared over 3 squared minus x squared over the square root of 3 squared equals 1. Okay, so the critical values are y equals plus or minus 3 and x equals plus or minus square root of 3. Let me not write that down because that gives you the impression that those are pairs. But let's draw in our graph. So uh, on the y-axis, the value of 3 is important to us. So we draw a rectangle. Um, the top of the rectangle is at y equals 3. The bottom will be at y equals negative 3. The left side will be at uh, negative square root of 3, which is about negative 1.7. So that's about right here. The left side of our rectangle is there. And the right side will be at about positive 1.7 right there. So there's our rectangle and if we draw in the diagonals and extend them we have our asymptotes. Okay. Then what we need to do is find a couple points on our graph. Now in this case if y equals 0 we end up getting uh, that x uh, I'm sorry, let's see, let's try that again. If y equals 0, then we have negative x squared over 3 equals 1, which is not possible. Okay, so we can't have y equals 0. If we let x equals 0, then we get y squared over 3 squared, or y squared over 9 equals 1, which is going to be true when y equals plus or minus 3. So we have ordered pairs 0, 3, and 0, negative 3 on our graph. So the 0, 3 is here, 0, negative 3 is here. That tells us that our hyperbola opens up and down rather than left and right by the 4. So hopefully that's helpful in uh, seeing how to graph equations of the form that we have here with a minus sign in them rather than a plus sign.